The Gopher Coaches Show is presented by Window Concepts and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union. Now, it's the Gopher Coaches Show with Lindsey Whalen and Ben Johnson. Welcome in to the Gophers Coaches Show. I'm Ahmad Hicks alongside K fans Justin Gard and of course, Minnesota head basketball coach Lindsey Whalen. Coach, thanks for joining us today. You have a bunch of energy this morning. You said you got a lot of sleep last night. You're feeling good, right? <laughs> I feel great. Feel, I feel great, well rested, um, excited about the day. And uh, I love our team. Okay. And so, uh, you know, today's a, a day of uh, we have practice and, um, you know, lots of film, obviously getting mm -hmm. ready for Ohio State and mm -hmm. um, a lot that we can take from. Um, the Maryland game, um, you know, before the new year. And um, Justin, you were there. So, I was. Um, you know, it, it just is, uh, I, you know, obviously, um, you know, we want to win and everybody wants to win. And, um, you know, the Maryland game was um, was tough at times. But we learned a lot. And, um, you know, so I'm fired up about our group. And uh, now we welcome in the number three team in the country in Ohio State. Uh, they're playing really well. But, you um, you know, I just, I like our group and I like where we're going. Well, I want to backtrack a little bit. Eight and six sure. overall, seven and two at home. That has to impress you somewhat about what you've been able to see from your young squad so far this season. Well, we talk a lot about to have a special season, you got to win your home games. Mm -hmm. You got to win your home games and you got to steal some on the road. And so, you know, obviously, I mean, look at this crowd. And, um, you know, obviously that was the second game of the season. And, um, you know, Mara, who we'll, we'll hear from here shortly, just, uh, you know, an unbelievable shot, an unbelievable game. And I just, the crowd... I think you can just feel uh, when you come to the barn and, uh, you know, the snow will be stopped by Thursday night. <laughs> so come out and watch this group. You know, they're a lot of fun. Um, I was watching a lot of the Big Ten games over the weekend and they're packed. I mean, packed houses. And so, um, you know, I want, you know, people in, in our community to, to really come out and, and see this team and watch what this, this group is doing. Got a, a group that you can really, um, you know, get to know and now follow for, um, for several years, so um, you know they're exciting. They're fun. They have great resolve. We play with great energy, and and effort is always there. And now it's just some execution pieces and some things that you go through as a group for the first time. But it's um, it's definitely geez, what's going on with my hair? Um, it's definitely <laughs> a uh, it's definitely my mom's going to say something about that. It's definitely a great group, and um, I'm just excited. Like that's why I'm so upbeat. Fun is the right word. We'll work yeah. on your hair as the season goes on as well. It's the first show. It's the first time we've been in person in like three right. years. We, have, we haven't had to hit a it's Zoom link. It's always been Zoom. Yeah, so we're all good. Uh, but you mentioned, and, and, and Ahmad mentioned, the youth of the team. Yeah. Obviously, a lot was said about the freshmen coming in. You could even throw Katie Baravich in there as a, as a third-year freshman who didn't yep. get to play a year ago. So yep. how have you seen them grow and develop just even in this you know, three- or four-month time? Well, well, you know, pretty, um, you know, steady. You know, I think it's been, it's been, you go through the non-conference and, and you come in through, you know, well, even backtracking to June. You know, you go June, July, some of August with workouts and you get your preseason in September and, um, you know, you get some recruiting visits and things like that and, and you kind of just, you know, kind of see them evolve and progress. And so now it's, you go from your non-conference um, where we finish off, you know, winning our last three in the non-conference. And, um, and now you get to Big Ten play. So seeing them just grow, seeing them come together um, as a group, um, you know, not only the freshmen and, and the young guys, but, um, you know, we have some players on our team. Uh, Michael Caton, who um, has been around for a, a long time, and, and Izzy, who, um, you know, are excited to be a part of this, a part of this team, part of this season. This is, you know, like we always say, the one time that there's a, 2022-2023 women's basketball team. So um, it's a fun group. They've progressed. Um, you know, I thought the Maryland game, I thought Rose was, was tremendous. I thought Maggie, you know, you can just see the hard work that they've put in. It's exciting to see so you can pick out different moments that people have stepped up in, individually and, and they continue to play for each other and continue to work. And yesterday was a, was a great day of practice. Uh, I feel like really good about it. And, you know, we just, you know, like what you, what you do is what we all do is one day at a time. Now, Coach, in those six losses that you guys have this year, four of them have been a, by a combined 19 points. Mm -hmm. Is there something to say about those close losses, or are there no moral victories with you guys? You know, I didn't think you were going to bring up the losses. So, <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit of it's, you know, you go, um, yeah, these games, a lot of them have come down to, you, you think of, like, you know, Kentucky, Wake, mm -hmm. you know, Penn State, which we right. win, Lehigh, which we win, um, Virginia, 
I mean, you can go down the list. And like you said, I, th I think it's, um, it reminds me a little bit of, of 2010 with the Lynx. Mm -hmm. We lost probably seven or eight games that year, one or two possessions. And a little bit of it is figuring out, you know, late game and figuring out those moments. Um, we talked about yesterday in practice, like um, getting those big stops that we need. Like, you know, yesterday it was uh, we're up two against the scout team with, you know, a minute 33 to go. So now we need, you know, stop, score, stop. We need, we need a stop. Now it's understanding that, that big stop that you need, understanding those moments, and then that big possession where you need to execute. And so a little bit of it is, as a group, you have to go through, you know, some of the good, we've had some good, and some of the, like, heartache that you have to go through. So the next time you're in that situation, you're that much more locked in on attention to detail. Right. Okay, this is the angle of my screen. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now at this point we're switching the ball screen or we're going to hard or we're going to, you know, hard hedge or trap the ball screen. Maybe a game before, you know, we didn't do it to, to the best of our abilities because, you know, you, you, you haven't gone through it before. Now you go through it, you, you find some success, you find some heartache. And, um, you know, I think that's how teams and players elevate from some of those wins and losses in those situations. So, like you said, um, you know, a lot of those games have been close, and we're, you said, we're four games away from right. being, you know, whatever, then it would be my math, you know. 12 and 2. Is okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I got we're, you. We're, I, and I'm not, I'm not good at math, I but I got no you. So, so you. I was out. Simple math. So you math. think you're eight possessions away from being 12 and 2. Right. You know, and so it just, like I said, it's a little bit of this is, is stuff that we have to go through, and, and just um, us as a group, as coaching staff, and as players, is remaining positive, staying positive, learning from um, what we can, and and continue to move forward. And how much, especially in Big Ten play, do you learn from the turnover part of that when it comes to valuing the ball and possessions? You know, you look at the Maryland stat sheet, everything looks even. Yeah. Except yeah, turnovers yeah, yeah. and points, points off turnovers. Off turnovers I mean, yeah. there's there's the difference right there. In Iowa, same thing. There's, yeah. you know, there's turnovers there. You can't turn it over against good teams. The passes that you get, get away with in, um, you know, whether it be high school, whether it be non-conference, a lot of that you, you just can't get away with it against Maryland. There's too long. Um, Ohio State, they're just, um, they're long, they're tenacious. You, and so you have to um, a little bit learn that on, a little bit on the fly because you've always been able to make this pass. You've always right. been able to get it through that window. And now, and now you can, and it's something that I had to go through as a player and, and everybody does. So our guards know the key to beating Ohio State on Thursday is taking care of the ball. And, and we know that the ball is going to be in – uh, Katie's hands a lot, Mara's hands a lot, Amaya is, Michael, they got to take care of it. And um, we had 19 assists, we score 85, you know, we, we score enough against Maryland. We, we, I, I love the 19 assists. So what we did is we made a pact that we were going to leave the turnovers in 2022. <laughs> we're going to bring the assists with us and, um, and get excited for the new year. Now that Penn State game a double overtime thriller, which I'm sure you guys were thrilled that you were able to pull away late. But what did that tell you about your team, their resiliency and their perseverance to go through a tough challenge like that, an early conference game? Well, it took two years off of all of our lives. But, um, that, I mean, that shot from that kid, I mean, that was unbelievable. We, th we think at that point we have a one. But we, you know, we're a team, like I said, our resolve, our energy, like you have to play, you have to guard and you have to play every inch for every second. I mean, I don't know many players that are going to go get fouled in that situation like Katie, like right here with, you know, and it is a foul with one point whatever seconds. We have no timeouts. We got to bring it. And then we got guys who just, you know, you talk about, you know, ice in your veins and things. You know, Katie hits these two. Then Mara hits, a, you know, before that she hits three free throws in a row. So it was a, a, a classic. It's um, just a lot of, like I said, a lot of resolve that our team has to, um, to be able to persevere and obviously a huge Big Ten win. And um, that was, you know, one of the, one of the better games that I think, you know, that we've all, you know, seen and been involved in. So it was just, uh, gosh, like now I want to go back and watch that game because that was unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was an unbelievable. We all I know, I know, that. I know. Fun. So it was fun. And, but, hey, listen, to me, it's – and Terry Morin said it two nights ago uh, after they played Nebraska. I don't know if we have to get to break, but this is the best – Women's basketball conference in the country, it is. I think it is. Top to bottom, it is. Uh, you see Illinois the other day beating Iowa. Um, you know, you have an overtime thriller with Indiana and Nebraska the other day. And um, so why wouldn't you be excited and why wouldn't you want to play in these, these games and, and go in with a group that's ready to learn and ready to work? So um, it's the best conference in women's basketball. It's what, it's, it's what, you know, it's what we're here to do and compete. And so, uh, you know, a lot of games like that you're going to see throughout the year.
touched a little bit on the returners. Obviously, Katie Baravich has, has started at, at point guard, yeah. played a lot, has the ball in her hands a lot. Rose, what a game she had against Maryland. Yeah. And, and uh, Maggie, too, has also really, I think, found herself here the last month or so. So what's it been like with those three returners, you know, the three core players from a year ago that stuck it out, hung around yeah. it, and then developed into important pieces? Yeah, well, for a lot of, a lot of the postseason, well, the whole postseason, we played a lot of three-on-three, three. and uh, we did a lot of skill development. We did finishing school every single day. So it was really, um, you know, we talked a little bit the other day as a team on things that, you know, as you, as you finish the year, just what you're, um, like what you're grateful for, what you're thankful for for that year. And I just, I, I can't tell you how, um, the entire team, how, how grateful I am um, for all of them to keep, um, you know, keep believing and keep believing in themselves and keep believing in the program. And, um, you know, those three guys, you know, there was, you know, a point when, you know, obviously there were some tough days, but there was a, a point when, when they could, uh, you know, made a decision, um, you know, whether they wanted to continue here or elsewhere. And they, they, they stayed and they worked and they worked and they worked. And um, like I said, it was a lot of days for about a month where it was the three of us, um, the three of them, sorry, and, you know, me, Kelly, Shimmy, the coaches here working out. And so then to see... And then you see them um, have a game like that, even within a loss of Rose, just her efficiency with, with 22 and 9, 10 for 15. I mean, she was, you know, she was tremendous in that game. She was on balance. You have Maggie, who, you know, has been working a lot on her, her shot and her outside, um, you know, efficiency and things like that. And then she comes out and has 16 and 8. But it's because she's, she's worked every day after practice for two right. straight months right. because she knows she wants to get to this level. Now she's, you know, out here after last year, injuries and things like that. And so to, for her to have a game like that, you know, Katie, you know, you see a game, um, you know, at, you know, on the road against Liberty where she has, you know, 23, a really efficient game, the Penn State game. I thought she was great. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and so you see those guys really come through. Obviously, we saw the Penn State highlight of Katie getting followed. You see those guys have success when there was times in March and April when, you know, it was a long way away of seeing right, that success. Right. So I'm, I should wrap up here. Everything's, really coming, proud everything's of coming together pretty much for the team. It's all good. We love to hear what you have to say. Now, coming up, she grew up only a couple of miles away from campus, but yet everyone in Minnesota and around the basketball world is starting to know her name. Mara Braun joins the set next. We'll see you right back here for more on The Coaches Show. Watching The Gopher Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Gopher Coaches Show. I'm Ahmad Hicks, Justin Gard, Lindsey Whalen, and the freshman phenom, Maura Braun. So we're going to dive right into it. You're one of the top recruits coming out of high school, one of the best players in the country. What sold you on Coach Whalen's program, and what made you want to become a Gopher? I mean, I watched her growing up. She was definitely one of my favorite players. Um, she was just so fun to watch, and just her energy and passion for the game. So I think, you know, her coming here and wanting to, you know, rebuild that and have players, you know, like us to stay home and do the same thing she did was kind of the main thing for me and just the opportunity to come here and be able to make such a difference. Can we talk about the transition from high school to college? How big of an adjustment has that been for you, or has there been an adjustment period? There's been a lot of ups and downs already, and, you know, it's so nice to have her and Rachel to be able to kind of help me out because, you know, they went through the same thing. So, you know, the ups and downs, I think the fact that, you know, I went and hit a buzzer beater my second game, you know, didn't really help the whole situation and being able to deal with all the lulls too. But, you know, it's just kind of about finding myself in each game and being able to, you know, that, that, that was, was crazy. That was a I mean, that was a yeah, that's that just, you can't top that. That's, out well. <laughs> yeah, so I think just dealing with the ups and downs and being able to stay consistent and, you know, stay there and be there for my teammates is a big thing. So Rachel Bannum, of course, the Rachel you're talking about, another all-time gopher great that's in here. Um, I'll ask you, Lindsay, what's it feel like when she says, um, well, I grew up watching her? Um, I mean, now we feel old. Now we feel like what yeah. happened. But yeah. that's the, the reality, right? So what's yeah. it like to even have Rachel as part of that, too, as someone who has done this walk to help out the ones that are doing it now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, it's what you want in a program. You know, I think you want to have you want to have that of players that have played here, have had um, you know great experiences, ups and downs, gone through all that, and then it's our jobs to help the next generation. And then right now, you know, it's it's Mara's time, Amaya, all these guys, and then there's somebody in the crowd that's watching them that's going to, yeah, that's going to yep. be out here someday, you know? And so I just, you know, I think that that's what you want. 
and um, you know so and everybody from you know for we you know we have a team of players from you know all over the world um, you know but it you know it's a little it, it's special when you're when you're home and when you stay home um, it's just where you grew up and you know your friends family um, and everybody's able to to have a, you know to be able to participate in it and so I think it's um, I think it's special and like I said I think it's all about you know helping through different times of ups and downs that that players and just you know people in college in general go through and we had people that helped us through you know I remember Carolyn Shudlick would come back when we would go out and play at Ohio State um, and she would talk to us and help us through and so and our and, and coaches and our coaches um, you know every every staff that I had was there to help us through different times and so that's now you know my main um, you know goal and main job along with you know, winning games and having all the success but um, you know, and like I said, now it's Mara, Maya, Mal, Rose, Katie, Maggie. It's it's their time now. Um, it's our job to prepare them as best as possible, um, and to make sure that that the team is continuing to get better and working. But it's um it's their time to go play, which is which is exciting, and I'm I'm happy to be part of their journey. Speaking of being exciting, your play is exciting on the court. Now I want to do something by looking at the numbers. Paige Beckers, you played her in high school. Obviously, she was a phenom just like you. Her freshman season, she averaged 14 points and four assists in 29 minutes. So far this season, you're averaging more points than her, 18 points per game. As a freshman, you're averaging more minutes per game. What does that say about your level of play? And do you think that you're getting the recognition that you deserve? I want to ask Coach that too, but I want to start with you. I mean, Paige is a great player. Um, played her for, you know, two two years. Played her a That's bunch. Awesome. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, she just that to be able to. You're not getting that call. No, I know. Yeah, you're not tough. getting that call. It's tough. I, you know, I've gone flex on a couple times and got <laughs> my ball swatted. So she's definitely humbled me. But no, she's just a great player. A lot of respect for her. So to be able to come in and you know you compare numbers, but I think just the main thing is to be able to have competed with her at this level and then kind of transfer that into the next level. I think next year is going to be cool for us to be able to play against each other again, and obviously that'll be a big year for her coming back and just getting that confidence back. But you know it's just cool, cool experience um, played against her, and then you know arguably Caitlin Clark also another best player in the nation. So to be able to play against them, you know, and I'm only a freshman, um, pretty cool. And you come in, obviously, with some other highly touted freshmen. I thought it was interesting what Nia Holloway said, I think, earlier this week. She's obviously not playing because she got injured. But so it's fun to watch all of you mm -hmm. do what you said you were going to do when you all committed. So take us back to that time, like what you were looking to do, what you were hoping to do, what those conversations were like. Well, we all kind of had it in the back of our minds. We wanted to come together and play for Coach Way. And um, Nia and Mal kind of committed first and they did it right away and I was playing with Nia at the time so there was just kind of you know her in the back of my head just being like hey it'd be pretty cool if you came here and play together so um, and then us three committed we came up here surprised Amaya I think that was kind of the cherry on top so she committed um, and from there we kind of just become super close we're all roommates um, you know, we have each other's back. One person ha doesn't have a very good game. There's, you know, three of us to pick them up. So it's been really cool to be able to grow with them. Um, and I'm just excited for the next three years with them. Well, I think we can all say the sky is the limit for the Minnesota women's basketball program with uh, Mara Braun and Coach Whalen here. Mara, thank you for joining the set with us. We appreciate your time and hope you keep killing it this year and setting all those records, you know, thank and you. hopefully break some of Coach Way's records. <laughs> yes. Thank right. you. Still to come, more to come on the Gophers Coaches Show. We're talking conference games coming up next and what the Gophers have to do to pick up a couple of wins. We'll be right back. Back to the Gopher Coaches Show. Welcome back in. Ahmad Hicks, Justin Gar, Coach Whalen. Coach, you guys are coming off a tough loss to Maryland, but you have the number three ranked team on your schedule coming up in Ohio State. What are you looking to see from your team against them? Just continued growth. Uh, we talked after Maryland that sitting in the locker room that, um, you know, we come out and we're playing, you know, in the Big Ten, um, obviously the, the, the thriller of Penn State. And then we, um, we go at Iowa, at Maryland, and then we host the three, number three team in the country in Ohio State at the Big Ten. So it's – and every team, is, every team is, um, is really good in this conference. Like I said, I think it's the best women's basketball conference in the country right now. So, you know, we might as well play these teams. We might as well see where we stack up. A lot of really good things from Maryland. 
you know, more to learn from. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we lost. But now it's, um, like I told the team yesterday, we've played against teams that have pressed. We've played against teams with stretch fives in, um, in Misha Lashikova, number 23. We've played against guards who, can, who you can't really leave from the three-point line. We've played against really athletic players. Um, I, I mentioned the press. Now it's just against a team that's undefeated, 15-0, and 0, number three, and probably the best athletes we'll have seen. Mm. And, and to be honest with you, two of their better players are, are out right now. Um, J.C. Sheldon's kind of more of probably like a week-to-week -week type deal, but Madison Green's out for the year, unfortunately. Um, you hate to see that for players. But so, hey, let's prepare. Let's watch film. Let's practice hard. Uh, and then let's get ready to go Thursday night. And let's just – let's see – I want to see continued growth. Um, I want us to continue to come together as a group and, um, and can you continue to work. Okay. Now, I want to end the show on a lighter note. We've talked a lot about basketball. We talked about what you expect to see from your team. I want to talk about Lindsey Whalen's feet heat because every time that I see her, she has some heat on her feet. Coach, what are you rocking today? Where did you get these? And how many shoes do you have? Oh, those are nice. It's hard to say. That, those are fire. Oh, my. Hey, here's the deal. This says Air Force 182, where uh -oh. I was born. That's kind of, I didn't even know that. <laughs> uh, I just got these on, um, you know, you know In 20 seconds, tell us how many shoes you have. 20, I, it's hard to say, but these maroon, um, you oh, know, you got to go with them, the maroon. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard to say. I've been you getting your very team a pair of those? Fortunate. I, um, uh, well, no, we have got, we have, we did have, you know, Christmas, so we did have a little. Uh, Man, we're out of time. We'll, 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 we'll follow up on I that. Have, I, I got some PD, too, too, and I know That's people want to see That's the coaching show with Coach Wayland. I don't want to see my PD, but have a great have day, guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to wait.